Okay. Now that we've discussed in detail uh, concepts like center of pressure and center of gravity and uh, bullet stability and bullet balance, we're equipped with the tools we're going to need to understand the concepts associated with overstabilization of bullets. Now, it is important to realize that you do want your bullet to be effectively stabilized, but too much spin can really amplify some of these different problems we're going to discuss here, especially when you get uh, further downrange. So uh, we already discussed how increased lateral throw-off can occur uh, with greater uh, twist rates in your barrel. And uh, we talked about how you want to optimize your twist rate uh, for the bullet you're using in such a way to where you're not using too much twist, but just enough to get it effectively uh, stabilized. If you have too much twist, you could experience increased lateral throw-off. And we discussed that in the last video. Another thing that can occur due to overstabilization is a structural failure due to overspin. We'll just briefly mention that. And the main thing we're going to concern ourselves with when we're talking about extreme long-range precision shooting for the purposes of these videos is that unbalanced aerodynamic effects, uh, including aerodynamic jump but not limited to that, uh, can really happen, especially uh, when you have gyroscopic effects of overstabilization that can cause a bullet to lose its dynamic stability and reduce its tractability. And this reduction in tractability is what uh, gives us some yaw of repose that gives you things like spin drift, increased drag effects at long range, and transonic problems, among other things that can happen down there. So that was kind of a mouthful. There's a lot of terms we're going to discuss here as we're discussing these different uh, sort of overstabilization. So uh, don't be intimidated if some of that didn't make sense just yet. So we'll go over all these different terms. We're going to talk about, first of all, unbalanced aerodynamic effects, gy gyroscopic effects, overstabilization, dynamic stability, tractability, magnus effect, yaw of repose, also known as equilibrium yaw. And we're going to do a, a whole video on spin drift and increased drag effects at long range and uh, transonic problems. So we're going to break this up into a bunch of small little videos here so that you guys can uh, easily index between these things if you uh, want to go back and revisit one of these instead of having to dig through one big giant video trying to look for something small. So we'll break it up. First here, I'm just going to give you a general overview of all those things I just mentioned, and then we're going to come back and revisit them in greater detail. So one of the first things we got to think about here and get a handle on is we got to think about the rotational speed of a bullet. How many RPMs are those things uh, spinning at anyways? Well, if you think about it, your bullet to in a typical rifling, let's say one in 10 rifling, that means your bullet is turning once every 10 inches. Uh, and let's say your bullet is going really fast. It's going three times the speed of sound. You're going to have a lot of of uh, RPMs going on there. It's a ridiculous amount of RPMs. And it's quite easy to figure out, actually, to figure out the rotational speed of a bullet. Here's a formula. If you want to figure that out, simply take the number 12 divided by your twist rate in inches times your velocity in feet per second times 60. And that'll give you revolutions per minute. A typical 308 rifle is going to have on the order of around 200,000 RPMs that that bullet is spinning. That's a lot faster than a Dremel tool, okay? So that thing's really, really, really spinning fast. So there's quite a lot of force, centrifugal force being uh, generated, stabilizing that projectile. One issue that can arise, it's uh, not super common, but it can happen in extreme high velocity loads, is structural failure due to overspin. If you got like a Wildcat 22 centerfire rifle that's going well over 4,000 feet a second, so like a six millimeter neck down to a 22, or a, you know some of the 243 neck down to the 22, there's a lot of different Wildcats out there that are really really booking. That those velocities, uh, some of those bullets can actually come flying apart. The and particularly the jacket comes flying off of the core, and uh, they just tear apart, and they're flying out just to overspin too much force. Uh, being exerted outwards from the rotational axis. Now, this is mostly a problem for varmint shooters 
who are shooting lightweight varmint bullets at extreme velocities. So for the purposes of long-range precision shooting, we're going to be using longer, heavier bullets, usually at more mild velocities than that. So it's not generally going to be an issue for us. But that is one of the things that can result from overstabilization is a structural failure. The main thing we're going to want to be concerned with is uh, unbalanced aerodynamic effects. Okay. Now we just talked about the rotational speed of the bullet being 200,000 plus RPMs. Okay. That's a lot of RPMs. And as we discussed earlier, uh, when we crank up those RPMs, we're increasing the rigidity of the spin axis of the bullet. And as the spin axis rigidity is increased, it's going to be harder to turn that bullet along that spin axis. And in order to tip it up or down off that axis is going to require a lot of uh, leverage. Uh, you're going to have to apply some kind of external force uh, in order to change it. Now, the thing to consider here is at extreme long range shooting, you're going to be taking high angle shots. You might have your elevation indexed at 60 minutes of angle, for example. Uh, that's a full degree. Uh, that's a pretty high angle shot compared to normal rifle shooting. And what can happen is when that bullet leaves the muzzle at an angle of uh, 60 minutes of angle in, you know, incline going up and uh, it's, it's flying out there. Once that thing passes its max ordinate in its trajectory and it goes on the descending leg of the trajectory, uh, it's going to be hard to get that bullet to, to track on and uh, tip its nose down because it's gyroscopically stabilized on in that, that uh, spin axis is very rigid due to the RPMs of that bullet spinning so fast. And another thing to consider as well is that when you fire a rifle bullet, you're going to have a certain given forward muzzle velocity and a certain given rotational velocity, the spin rate. And what happens is, due to aerodynamic drag, the rate of your forward muzzle velocity is going to obviously drop off very quickly due to atmospheric resistance. And so by the time your bullet gets out to 1,000 yards or beyond that, it's going to be going considerably slower than when it started. A lot of times you're going to start off going uh, 2,900 feet a second, and at 1,000 you might only be going around 1,000 feet a second. So that's like only one-third uh, approximately of the original velocity. At the same time, your, uh, your actual forward velocity is decreasing at such a high rate, your rotational velocity is going to keep up at speed a lot better, okay? Uh, basically, you don't have as much air resistance. Uh, you're going to have a slight friction of, of uh, air on the rifling, grooves on the sides of the bullet, and the microscopic imperfections along the bullet axis will cause it to slow down its rotational velocity just a little bit. But even at 1,000 meters, it's uh, usually keeping up around 80% of its uh, rotational velocity. So you might start off at 200,000 RPMs at the muzzle and at 1,000 meters, you're still going 150,000 RPMs. So proportionally speaking, at 1,000 meters, you're spinning a lot faster proportionally compared to your forward velocity than you were when you started off. So as your bullet is coming down on that descending leg of its trajectory, it's going to still be at that angle of departure which was uh, inclined, it's elevated, right? It was started off at a 60 minute uh, angle going up, that's about a degree, and on your descending leg, even though your direction of flight is coming down, your bullet is still pointing nose up like it was when it left the muzzle. In a lot of cases, it's actually uh, pointing more nose up than it was before, and we'll discuss that a little later. But when I mention the term gyroscopic effects, that's what we're basically referring to. Now, it's important to note again, as we're talking about these things, that uh, these are applying to extreme long-range shooting. This is not something that's going to be a factor at 200, 300, 400, even 500 meters. But when you get out there to over 1,000, this is going to start having uh, quite a large effect on how that bullet is flying. So if you're only hunting deer at three or 400 yards max, this is not something you need to concern yourself with. You're not even going to notice. So if you take a look at this figure here of the overstabilized bullet, you can see how when it exits the muzzle, its longitudinal axis is keeping its direction, its original direction in space. 
And once you pass the max ornate, that thing is coming down at a belly down angle. And that's going to cause some uh, problems and some things that we're going to have to be able to correct for, especially if you want to hit smaller targets at long range. Now, this nose up orientation in our bullet, particularly during that descending leg, is what's going to cause our dynamic instability at long range, which is basically aerodynamic instability. That thing's not pointed nose on anymore at the same direction as flying, so it's going to have some weird things going on with the wind. And when spinning objects are uh, have forces applied to them, uh, there are certain uh, things in physics you're going to want to be aware of. And we're going to talk about that on the next videos here. We're going to talk about the tractability factor and how that basically represents a bullet's ability uh, to keep its longitudinal axis on line with the trajectory line. Unfortunately, most bullets uh, at the rates they're sp spun at are not going to have uh, good tractability at extreme ranges. Uh, they are going to lose some of that tractability factor. We'll talk about that too. The main thing we're going to have to concern ourselves with as far as dynamic instability for long-range shooting is the Magnus effect. The Magnus effect basically causes the bullet to encounter a yaw, uh, basically twisting off its axis of flight a little bit. The, we're going to talk about the yaw of repose, angle of attack, and angle of incidence. There's a couple terms in there we're going to discuss. And then we'll finally get into the drag effects due to these dynamic instabilities. So that's uh, what we're going to cover in the next couple videos here. So the next video... We're going to get into more detail on dynamic stability when we compare it to static stability, like we talked about in the earlier video in more detail. And when we're all done laying out these concepts, we will show you how to adjust for the things like spin drift, also known as gyroscopic drift, and some of the other things that uh, these, these dynamic instability problems do cause. We'll show you exactly how to make that uh, correction and make charge for it as well. Thank <laughs> you.